I've been playing a lot of Days Gone recently, running around, fighting zombies. It's freakers, not zombies. Oh, excuse me, excuse me, freakers, excuse me, freakers. <laughs> okay, fighting freakers, upgrading my bike and watching an initially distant and cold protagonist slowly develop into someone with whom I can relate. You know, the typical Sony exclusive gaming experience. Now for the most part, I'm enjoying it. However, I can't help but feel as though something here is just off. If you've played the game, you've probably felt this too. It's hard to explain. Basically, the game feels like a hodgepodge of three different things. Namely, an open world game based in exploration of said world, a linear narrative title, and a survival shooter. The problem is that Days Gone doesn't do any of these three well, especially compared to other games that have released in the last year and a half. So in this video, I'm going to show you concrete examples of how and why Days Gone has fallen short and why it fails at almost everything that it tries to accomplish. Furthermore, I'm going to give you one simple change that will have fixed almost all of its problems because I'm a quality content creator who doesn't just say inflammatory things for clicks. The kettle is calling the pot black. Oh, yeah. So yes, that's right. I'm going to put on my best Dr. Phil hat. Uh, oh, wait, he doesn't wear hats. I'm gonna put on my best Dr. Phil stash and we're gonna get cracking. Now, before we begin, I feel as though I should stress that I still enjoy Days Gone. I would say it feels like a really awesome game from 2015. And if it launched back then, it would be in the running for game of the year and many other awards. I honestly believe that. The problem is, it's not 2015, and we've come to expect a lot more from the games that we play. Titles such as God of War, Red Dead Redemption 2, The Witcher 3, all of these have raised the bar as to what we should expect from a full-priced AAA game. Simply, you can have fun playing Days Gone, but that doesn't mean that it's without major problems, and furthermore, that those issues are immune to criticism. So, while I go through all of my beefs that I have with Sony Ben's latest title, bear in mind that I do enjoy it and have had a good time playing it over the last few weeks, but I still feel the need to dissect exactly what's going on here. Days Gone is a bit of an enigma. It's a zombie, I, I mean, freaker game that feels as though it's at a crossroads of identity, practically a midlife crisis of game development. For this reason, it feels a lot like the saboteur to me. Now, if you didn't play that game, don't worry, you share that with most people. It was a game that tried to mix Grand Theft Auto 4 with Assassin's Creed and put it all into a World War II setting with a pretty unique art style. Actually, when I say that out loud, it actually sounds pretty cool. The problem being that it didn't do anything well. It tried to do too much. It tried to have a free running system like Assassin's Creed with a discount stealth system and a broad array of vehicles that was meant to mimic that of Grand Theft Auto 4. The driving sucks, the shooting is pathetic, and the free running wouldn't even make Michael Scott proud. It's really too bad because at the core of both Days Gone and The Saboteur, there's an enjoyable experience. I might even say a good game, but they fall victim to this trap, the trap of thinking that a game can only be super successful if it does anything and everything. Effectively, if it's everything to everybody. And this is why Days Gone has crafting, motorcycles, hordes of zombies, or, or freakers, heavy cinematics, survival mechanics, and the list goes on and on. This assumption that they've made simply isn't true. In fact, the opposite is often true. The Last of Us is incredible because it tells a story that isn't particularly amazing, but it tells it in an amazing and effective way. The gunplay isn't revolutionary, the traversal and puzzles are all pretty simple, but the narrative is fantastic. And what's more, Naughty Dog knew that and made the narrative the focus with everything else being put in place to reinforce and support what they saw as their flagship feature. But this point is somewhat extraneous. Let's get into the specifics of how and why Days Gone feels mediocre in 2019. One of the key selling points of this game was that it was going to put the player in the middle of a zombie. Th Damn it, I said it again. This is so stupid. They're zombies. I don't care what anybody says. 
They put you in the middle of a freaker apocalypse and give you a motorcycle to explore and navigate its vast expanses. Furthermore, Ben Studios puts in place a ton of survival game mechanics to make the game feel more gritty, according to the game's director, John Garvin. Its open world is large, but it completely relies on its dynamic freaker system to make the world feel alive. After all, the element of dynamism is crucial to making a world feel living and real. After all, if my actions don't have consequences beyond what is taking place in scripted sequences, I'm going to subconsciously or consciously separate from the world and lose interest. It will cease to be another world and instead morph into a sandbox within which I'm very much aware I'm playing. If you've played Days Gone, however, you'll know that its world inevitably ends up feeling very stale and uninspired, especially after long periods of exploration. The reason is that the Freaker system is just about the only dynamic thing here besides the weather. This is a major problem, especially when you consider that the game was sold on the idea that the possibilities were endless. Think I'm exaggerating? Just look at this. It's a quote from an interview that the game's director and writer, John Garvin, gave to Edge magazine. He said, quote, all the systems come into play in a way that makes predictability impossible, and that's what makes the gameplay experience awesome. The permutations, how many different kinds of things that can happen, are just astronomical." End quote. This is just plain wrong. I'm not saying that our old pal John is lying, but it's pretty clear once you play the game that this simply isn't how the game plays. I suppose it is possible for the game to have a bunch of dynamic systems that are all working in tandem, but counterintuitively, that does not inherently mean that the gameplay experience will be dynamic as well. Think about a river with a ton of different, smaller streams pouring into it, all at different intensities, speeds, and volumes. Each stream has an element of unpredictability or dynamism, but the flow of the river is going to remain somewhat constant and predictable. This can be argued by way of what is known as chaos theory because the river's contributing streams are all what we would call a complex adaptive system. But all of this is way too meta for a video on a fairly bland video game. So point being, having dynamic systems does not mean that the gameplay itself will end up being dynamic. GTA 5 may have a bunch of dynamic systems all working in tandem at the same time, but the actual gameplay experience that most players will have will be identical and predictable. So, is this a problem? Well, I would say only insofar as the game was developed, designed, and balanced by people who thought they were building something that they weren't. I can't stress this enough. Other than the Freakers, everything in Days Gone is painfully predictable. The writing, the line delivery, the fade to black before every single cutscene, the item placement, conversations, quests, slash missions, even the plants are all static. For instance, I needed some birch wood for my crossbow's arrows and was having a hell of a time finding birch trees or wood anywhere. I was running around on foot in the middle of the night trying to gather some and spent a solid 30 minutes finding enough for just 10 arrows. I then returned to my early in-game base and realized, hey, there's four of these tree bush things sitting right outside the gate. Good to know, I'll come back for them when I'm desperate. I later did that very thing, but when I returned the next occasion, all the trees were back. So I cut them down again, and then they were back the next day. They were statically placed and would predictably respawn, totally removing the frantic search mechanic that I had thought was in place. Now, I just went and returned to that spot whenever I needed that resource. And this is also true of all of the other resources too that are used in crafting and seem to dynamically generate in the world. Things such as gas canisters, wood, flowers, everything is perfectly predictable and can be found after respawning a day or two later. Again, this isn't inherently a bad thing, but when you were selling your game on the fact that its world is so vastly dynamic, it certainly doesn't help matters. But let's shift gears. Let's discuss the narrative for a moment. Probably my favorite part of Days Gone is the story it's trying to tell. And I use the word trying very intentionally. Beyond the myriad of technical issues that plague the narrative's presentation, such as the constant fade to black, slow load times which kill the tension and delivery of many scenes, extreme pop, and even during dialogue sequences, and many, many more, Beyond these, the story is actually pretty heartbreaking. It's all about a man who's trying to hold himself together in a dark and unforgiving world. And once he has a sliver of hope, he starts to change and gains a new lease on life. 
It really is endearing, but once again, because of the game's lack of focus, it never blows you away with any given scene or sequence. Like in The Last of Us, there are many iconic scenes in that game, but in Days Gone, they never achieve anything remarkably unique or haunting. Now, not every game has to be The Last of Us, of course, but it is good to aspire to be like that of the greats. And given the familiar subject matter, it seems to me a fair comparison. Days Gone also has a couple of scenes that you can tell the writers were really proud of that they show you early on which is good. But you might be asking, how do I know that they were really proud of these scenes? Well, because they show the same scene three freaking times in the span of roughly five hours of gameplay. Not joking, the exact same cutscene. They play the same thing twice almost all the way through, and then they flash snippets a little bit later. They were probably supposed to be quick flashbacks meant to remind the player of Deacon's motivations, but for one, players aren't stupid and can remember things that happened less than five gameplay hours earlier. And two, load times are so egregious in Days Gone that these quick flashbacks turn into a three to five minute diatribe rehashing something we've already seen, which actually decreases its narrative potency instead of increasing it, which was likely their goal. As for the gameplay, your bike controls like a legless and freshly neutered Great Dane, the gunplay is painfully stiff, the weapon variety is very poor, the quests are dominated with follow the leader and fetch quests, and the game becomes more repetitive than a Calvinist's sex life six months in. All of this can easily be summed up by saying that Days Gone doesn't actually do anything well. I literally can't think of anything that the game does better than any other game. It has a discount story, budget gameplay, and thrift store quality tech. It just isn't good at anything. Now I know all of this sounds very harsh, mean, and rude, and I'm going to address that in just a second. But we've also done a fair bit of comparing and contrasting in this video, looking at Days Gone next to another title that found major commercial success. And so I feel I should state that I'd prefer it too if we could just look at Days Gone as a standalone title, irrespective of other studios' work. But I don't think that that's entirely fair to do. Specifically, if we look at what Sony Santa Monica did with God of War, or what Rockstar did with Red Dead Redemption 2, both of which are $60 titles, mind you, it seems to me highly naive to look at these in a vacuum. The reality is that these games have set trends and standards, and that's a good thing. The fact that Red Dead's world feels so alive is good because it means that's what players will expect from $60 open-world AAA titles moving forward. This is how we make progress and how the industry moves forward. But this also means that when a game comes along that places itself in the same category as Red Dead by way of its pricing, we have to call out its shortcomings in contrast. Days Gone, whether it likes it or not, is in the same price tier as Red Dead Redemption 2, God of War, Sekiro's Shadows Die Twice, and even the upcoming games such as Cyberpunk 2077 and The Last of Us Part 2. This means that the game not just will be, but should be compared to these. The best in the business. If Days Gone were being sold for $50, I wouldn't be making a lot of these complaints or at least not as energetically. But the fact stands that it isn't. It's being sold to players as a mainline AAA title, and in that regard, it simply falls short. So many things in this game just reinforce the idea that this development team was pretty inexperienced when it came to AAA grade open world games with engaging narratives. With that in mind, I actually think Days Gone is even more impressive, but it doesn't change the fact that these problems exist. You can go see a short film that was filmed by college students and it can be really impressive for the budget and the experience level of the participants. But if there are major issues with the editing, acting, or writing, it doesn't do anyone any good to ignore them just because you want to be able to be nice to the inexperienced party.
Now, all of these criticisms and critiques, at least in my eyes, would be pointless if I were unable to provide a solution. And to me, the solution to most of Days Gone's problems is actually quite simple. All they had to do was eliminate one of the three thematic goals that I outlined at the start of the video. In other words, only pursue two of the three. If you want to make an open world narrative game, great. They just needed to forego the survival elements. They wanted to make an open world survival game, great. Just drop the ham-fisted narrative. Pick your battles, choose what you want to do really, really well and be the best at it, instead of trying to do everything. It didn't work for Assassin's Creed Unity, it didn't work for the Saboteur, and it won't work for a Freaker game. Despite all of this, however, I've still had fun with Days Gone. I still feel as though it's very outdated and more of a proof of concept than a full-fledged release. Specifically, when I play Days Gone, I'm not as much in love with Days Gone, but rather with the knowledge that the sequel will be able to tackle all of the problems that are so apparent here. Beyond that, I also hope that they learn to become more focused and be the best in one or two elements of their game as opposed to trying to be everything to everybody. Days Gone is fun, but it fell very short. Thank you all for watching, honestly and truly, it really does mean the world to me. If you liked the video, consider hitting the like button, it really does help, and subscribe for more content like this. I love you all, and I'll see you in the next video.